All right. Good evening and welcome to another Fellowship Friday. And this time it's on, uh, well, it's always on Brother Luke's uh, channel, Sin City Preacher. Uh, if you wonder why you're not hearing him, hearing Brother Luke, uh, he is um, taking a, a weekend off. Um, I believe he's with some, uh, what, is, what is he doing? Uh, does anyone remember what, what Brother Luke's doing? He's going to the Shakespeare. That's right. He's, he's being a thespian, or at least a thespian uh, enjoyer, the Shakespeare Festival. Uh, so we wish him well. Uh, he asked me, my, my name is, for those of you that don't know, my name is Jason Cripps, and I'll just be standing in uh, for Brother Luke tonight. And before we get started, I cannot fill Brother Luke's sh uh, shoes. We're very different people, and he does things uh, a certain way. I'm going to do my best uh, to... Uh, you know, keep things going and uh, get people involved and, um, you know, do the uh, similar kind of things that he would like to have done. Uh, and I'll do the best I can. Uh, but I do have some wonderful people that are helping me tonight. We did expect a few more uh, to join us. So we do apologize for the late start. We were trying to give people a chance to, to jump in. Um, so before we get started and uh, we'll go over a little bit what we plan on uh, doing for tonight. I'll introduce who's with me, and I'll start uh, on my screen from the left. We have uh, Sister Lisa with us tonight. Uh, say hello to the peoples, Lisa. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to fellowship with you tonight. Blessings in Jesus' name. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I wasn't on the panel last week, but I really enjoyed your comments. I always do um, from, from the fellowship from last week, so that was very good. Um, glad you're here with us tonight. Thank you for uh, being here. Thank you. Um, also, I said I'd start from the left, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, mention Brother Dave last, uh, and we'll go with uh, uh, Paula. Paula, um, uh, we're no strangers. Uh, Paula's on uh, TSL with us on Sunday nights. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here on this uh, Fellowship Friday. Paula, how are you tonight? I'm good. Uh, good to see everybody. And I'm looking forward to some lively conversations. Good. <laughs> and, you, and you know how to have lively conversations. Paula. I try. <laughs> you do. You do. Very beneficial. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks. Um, also tonight with us, Matthias. Matthias, Brother Matthias is with us uh, as well. And um, it's a rare treat because he'll actually, um, actually probably say some stuff. He usually works in the background a lot, a lot more lately. Um, which is great. I mean, there needs to be someone in the background producing everything, but um, we hope that he's going to get involved in the conversation tonight. I'm sure he will. Welcome. I, I'm here, and uh, I'll say some stuff. And hello to everybody. I'm yeah. Happy to be here. And, uh, yeah, I had just messaged uh, Brother Dave, so it's funny, right? When I messaged him, he popped in. Yeah, yeah. perfect, 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 perfect. Thanks, Matthias. Uh, Brother Dave, God Jesus. What's happening, Crips? Yay, hey, man. How you doing? I'm all right. I just pulled in, man. I had to go. I got a little young brother I'm discipling, man, and he's uh, he lives in a boarding home, so I got caught up in some traffic, and I just pulled into the house. So No, you know what? It's it's uh, We're glad you're here, man. Uh, it hey, it's be good to be here, man. God bless each and every one of you, to the panel, to those in the chat. I hope you guys had a great week. I hope you guys are ready for a great weekend. And if everybody could just please uh, lift up a prayer tonight for our evangelism outreach tomorrow. Once again, we will be in uh, the mean streets of Philadelphia, and we're going to be lifting up the name of Jesus. We're going to be sharing the gospel. We're going to be praying uh, for a move of God and just bringing the word to uh, the lost souls out there. Nice. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, I don't know how many people are Facebook friends with uh uh, Brother Dave, but he does uh, do a good job of posting the videos up. Um, I, I see him now and then uh, doing just what he's saying, uh, lifting up the name of the Lord and uh, baptizing some folks I've seen on there and uh, sometimes music and sometimes uh, pictures of the crowd and uh, praising God and all that. So um, definitely we'll keep you in your, uh, keep, keep you in our prayers, bro, Dave. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Okay, um, I think we've introduced everyone. Uh, we were kind of hoping Renee would join us, but um, you know maybe she'll pop in uh, a little bit later. So what I want to do, 
Uh, as Brother Luke said last week, uh, he wants to involve the chat. He talked a little bit about there being a hierarchy. We have the panel and then we have the chat and it's supposed to be about fellowship. So last week he tried to make a concentrated effort after having a conversation with Matthias and uh, trying to involve people more. So we're gonna follow the same pattern tonight. I thought it uh, worked out pretty well, but uh, to be honest, uh, since I wasn't on the panel and I was just able to listen after the fact, um, we definitely want you guys in the chat to be more involved. Uh, that's the purpose of doing it this way rather than just having us on the panel just go on and on about stuff which we're all happy to do. We're all talkers, we're all willing to uh, discuss things, but what we really wanna do uh, is hear from you. We want to, um, uh, we're gonna start out with uh, praise reports. That's the way Brother, Luke's like, Brother Luke likes to start out talking about some praise reports out there. Um, so we'll do that first. And then, so just if you have any questions or topics or praise reports of your own that you wanna share, uh, do me a favor and please put them in caps so that I can see them. Makes it easier for me to see them. Um, I will be scrolling through there. Uh, also, if anyone else on the panel notices something I may miss, uh, please feel free to bring it up because uh, we do want to involve the chat. It is Fellowship Friday, so we want to make sure everyone's involved. Um, so there's a lot of people in the chat, so uh, I don't think he goes name by name. Um, so when you do bring up something in the chat, then of course we'll say who we got it from and we'll uh, try to answer your question or talk about your topic. All right, so we'll start out with praise reports and that includes everyone in the chat. If you have a praise report, uh, please share it and we'll talk about it here uh, on the air too. So we'll start with the panel. Uh, are there any praise reports before we get going? Anybody have anything they wanna share? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, God answered a really big prayer that I had for a really long time today. And <gasps> I'm very grateful for it. And it was, um, it was something that I was sort of dragging my feet about, like a, a decision to have, to, to, to have something done. And um, I, I mentioned it on one of our Friday fellowships and Lisa uh -huh. actually brought a really great verse to my mind about okay. um, a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord or something like that, one, that verse. And that was just a really good comfort to me because mm -hmm. um, I think I was looking for a sign from God to say, okay, go ahead. And I wasn't getting it. So okay. um, just mentioning it, and in, in our fellowship, uh, just her bringing that verse to me brought me a lot of comfort. And um, I finally did what I was dragging my feet about and okay. it turned out way better than I thought it could. And it's just uh, a wonderful thing. And I wanna thank God for that. Oh, praise God, God. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That Boom. is awesome. <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing that. So, uh, hey Paula, don't you feel like a relief, or don't you feel like a sense of um, comfort and joy? You're like, yes, what did I wait for? <laughs> yes, exactly. That yeah. that's how I felt. I was like, what? Why is that Sister Paula, about, Lord? <laughs> if I could say something real quick, uh, I arrived at that after much agony myself over something I was trying to decide and I was praying and praying and praying unto the Lord and I, I didn't get an answer and I ran up and the Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance that um, the scripture also trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. So when I, I, I focused on in all thy ways because i remembered where the bible says our ways is not are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts and yet he says he's going to keep us in all of our ways mm -hmm. so then when i ran across the other scripture about how the lord will order your steps yes i said you know what lord i know that what i'm about to do is is not sin it's it's a gray area it's just up to me to choose so you haven't answered me i've done my best to make the proper assessment and i'm just gonna act and trust you already knew what i was gonna do before i did it that you've already made provision in advance and i'm just gonna act and yeah. that's exactly 
what happened to me. It turned out better than I could have imagined. Yeah. Awesome. You, you know that get God's hand is involved when it turns out better than you imagined. Exactly. <laughs> oh, isn't that right? Yeah, uh, a lot of times, well, a lot of times God does something that we could never have done in our own power, for sure, uh, oh, which yeah. is amazing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Th thank you for sharing that, Paula. Um, yeah, that's that's, awesome. that's a good way to get us going tonight. Um, I just want to tell Paula that I'm glad that she took that step forward and, you know, trusted God and just went ahead and and, and stepped out of the boat, and she saw that it was good. Um I like Lisa too. You know, I shared a similar situation with a, a church that I was involved in was, uh, you know, condemning me for, for wanting to seek medical help with a, uh, a panic disorder that I had. And uh -huh. I fought with it for years and years and years. And finally, I just, I just said, Lord, I'm going to the doctor. And, mm -hmm. uh, when I sat in the doctor's office, the doctor walked in and it was just like, Oh, you know what I mean? It was like one of those moments where God just filled me with peace. And it was like, what took you so long? <laughs> wow. Right. And right. I, you know, I, I was on medication for a little while, you know, a couple months and I got, I got evened out and then eventually they tapered me off. And I, and I haven't had a, I haven't had a panic attack probably, I don't know, probably within a year. A year? Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah it's been a year Christ. since I've had any, uh, I've had anxiety creep up on me, but yeah, I, yeah. like I said, I, I dealt with it for so many years that I, I just breathe and pray or I speak the word and, and, and God just shows up and just knocks it right out. But I mean, that's not to say I couldn't have one again, but if I do, it's, you know, thank God it's so far and few in between when it was like every day, several times a day, you know? Yeah, 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 sure. Wow, praise God. That's awesome. Praise God, Brother Dave. So I'm just I'm just uh happy that Paula stepped out and, and just went, you know, and, and trusted the Lord. And that's sometimes we gotta do that. And I know it's you know, we think a certain thing or we hear a certain thing, but then it's like, you know, God ultimately does know better and, and what may be good for one may not be good for another, and we just gotta we just gotta trust him in our walk and he will confirm and, and when he gave her yeah. that peace and that 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 lifting off of that of that you know concern or whatever then she knows she did the right thing amen amen right and i also uh took lisa's advice on this one too because she said you know that she uh was talking about her situation and that she had asked the lord like if this is not what you want please put obstacles in the way yeah and so i was like well that's brilliant yeah because maybe I don't see the sign that he's saying, yes, it's fine, my child. Go ahead, you know. But I'll definitely know if he puts an obstacle in the way. Well, that brings up an interesting point. How, how does a, a, a believer determine what's an obstacle from the Lord and what's an obstacle that Satan puts in our way to keep us from uh, the path that we're supposed to be on? Just constant prayer with yeah. him and I'll asking him to give you the eyes to see what's going on and what your next move should be. I mean, and confirmation uh, from the spirit that's in us too. Yeah, uh, helps us discern that as well. Any any worry, any fear, any doubt, usually doesn't come from God. Um, oh, good point. It, it could possibly. Normally, they'd say you know peace, confirmation. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, and like a, you know your mind being at ease over a situation usually is what God will do and. The, the enemy will try to bring fear, doubt, confusion, and condemnation. And, that, and that's not always the case, but that is a good uh, type of indicator on some things. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Bro Dave, because he says that he he did not give us the spirit of fear. So that I, I'm glad that you brought that up. So if you're feeling fear about us, see, the, the truth is we don't have to have fear, even if we're going through a hard time or tribulation or trial, whatever, whatever way we want to look at the things, the circumstances that are happening in our life. Um, he doesn't want us to, to live in fear over those things. We, he wants us to trust him. And, uh, and, and when we do, uh, I believe that there's confirmation in us that we're, we're doing the right thing by waiting, patiently waiting on him and stepping out when he tells us to step out. It's both. It's not always just sitting back. Sometimes he wants us to move. And when we do move, um, I believe there's great reward in that. And, and uh, it fulfill, he fulfills his promises in that area. Um, I wanted to reference someone in the chat. Stacy uh, Stacy Ann in Arizona says, thank you to anyone who prayed for my daughter and grandson 
They're doing 100% better, praise God. So that's a praise report from the chat. So I just wanna mention that really quick. Praise Jesus. Amen. Um, see, uh, I don't see any other ones. Did any, uh, anyone else notice any in the chat as far as praise reports go? Okay, um, Matthias, if you don't have one, I'll go ahead with mine. If you have a praise report you want to share, I, I don't want to. Uh, we've got some really good ones so far on the panel. Uh, no, I'd love to hear yours. Um, Brother Cripps, I've just seen one from Junebug in the chat if you want to catch that one. Yeah, go ahead. If you have it in front of you, go ahead and catch it. It's uh, Junebug. Junebug said that... Um, she, uh, they, I don't know if it's a he or a she. I'm guessing it's a she. I think it is. Okay. Well, if yeah. not, I apologize. Okay. But Junebug says, I have a praise report. My best friend sent me a quote the other day. I checked the Twitter account from it, and guess what? The whole account was about Jesus. Oh. Awesome. So I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Maybe her friend is 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 new to coming to Christ, or yeah. or. Uh, Okay, and uh, uh, Junebug, you can fill that in a little bit if uh, if Brother Dave is, is on, uh, trying to understand that. Yeah, she is new. She she just said that she is new. He or she. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. Great. Uh, yeah. So again, while uh, while I'm telling my uh, telling my praise report, so if you guys have any more praise reports in the chat. Um, when we're done with these, then what we'll do is we'll just open it up for uh, uh, questions or comments or topics or anything that you guys want to talk about. Um, we want to fellowship with you. Uh, we don't want it just to be us on the panel fellowshipping with each other, uh, but we will. We will certainly do that. Um, okay, so I actually have several uh, praise reports. I'll try to keep it as short as possible, but I have a lot of, of, a lot of things to praise God for. Um, I try to to, to stay in an attitude of praise. I'm not always successful at that, um, but I've been through a lot of things. Um, for those of you that have listened to the different shows that I've been on, I, and I've told my story, little bits of my story and my testimony from time to time, and it's an ongoing thing. I don't, I don't think anybody that walks with God, I, I don't think their testimony just stays in the same place. Um, it continues to grow and change as he continues to work in us and through us in uh, making us into the likeness of Christ. Uh, your story should be ongoing. You know, you don't you don't stay stagnant. You don't stay on a quagmire of uh, no change. Um, but uh, there's been some really big changes. Uh, one of the things, for those of you that don't know, I moved from where I was. I was taking care of my um, elderly grandmother. And when I say elderly, she's 94. And I uh, took care of her for two years and six months. Um, and then uh, when I met Jen uh, nine months ago, um, we were waiting for her divorce to be final and waiting on the Lord. And um, uh, when, when that was all uh, taken care of, then we wanted to wait on God for when I could move uh, to Williamsburg and, and help with the store that she decided to take. And that's a whole long story, but uh, the praise report there is that um, there was a lot of moving parts. And, and when I said earlier that he does things in our life that we couldn't have done in our own power, I didn't know how it was going to all work out. Um, I was living with my grandmother in the uh, townhouse where my mom died uh, two and a half years ago. And that's the whole reason I was there in the first place. And that was an unexpected thing. Um, I'm glad I did it. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, God uh, brought me through it. And he grew me and taught me many things during that period of time. Um, the whole radio or the whole YouTube thing, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I was working uh, working very hard to make ends meet. I didn't have time for anything else before I got into the situation. Um, you really wouldn't be hearing my voice right now if all this stuff hadn't happened. I wouldn't know Matthias. I wouldn't know Paula or Lisa or Brother Dave or Brother Luke or Renee or any of you guys in the chat. Um, so uh, he did everything in his own time to bring it together 
so that I could be where I am now, which is uh, in Williamsburg, working uh, in the store with Jen, um, uh, trying to uh, see if that uh, situation is going to work out, and we believe that it will. So I praise him that uh, he he did all the things that needed to be done uh, without me trying to monkey around with stuff and jump ahead and run ahead and, and try to do things in my own power. It all happened uh, the way that he wanted it to happen. And my sister came forward and said that she was willing to take her turn with grandma uh, after I had done it for the length of time that I did, which I did not expect that to happen. I didn't know how that situation was going to work out. Uh, but it did. So my grandma's in a safe place. She's not home or anything. She's at my sister's house in a nice little basement apartment with uh, with my sister's uh, husband's mom that lives there as well. Um, she has her own room and they share a kitchen and a, ba- and a bathroom and um, they keep each other company. So that's working out pretty well. It's a little bit of a transition. Um, and then uh, uh, Jen came up with the truck and helped me move. And uh, other than a broken air conditioner and her van on the way back. Uh, everything went smoothly, no road uh, problems or hazards or anything. And we got uh, moved in. I'm in a temporary situation for now, uh, but um, got here safely. And it's been nothing but awesome uh, things in the few days that I've been here and working in the store and just uh, everything has just been going great. Um, and I just simply uh, praise God that he has um, uh, protected me and kept me and kept uh, Jen as well and kept my grandmother and my sister and everyone involved in this whole scenario and it went off without a hitch. I mean, anytime you make a big move like this, any number of things can happen and it's not that I expect it, it's just that I'm prepared, uh, but nothing happened. It was just everything uh, went by very well. So I've took a, taken a very long time to uh, to go over this, but um, I just praise God for his uh, many blessings and all the ways that he does that. And um, thank you. Thank you for giving me the time. That's uh, that's my praise report, just blessing, uh, blessing so many people. It's not just about me. Um, and there's so many people involved, including Jen's parents, who are um, uh, both doing very well and uh, being very welcoming. Um, and uh, kind and uh, praying for us. And uh, so everything's good on this end. Praise God. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank God. you. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you guys in the chat for all your kind words. I appreciate that so much. Um, where's Renee? Good question. Melissa Brian Mills asks, where's Renee? We don't know where Renee is. Uh, we would love her to join us, but um, I'm sure... Um, I'm sure she has a good reason. Uh, Jason, there was an interesting comment made earlier in the chat by Cody. Cody. Bring bring it on. Um, He said, I'm having doubts now because my friend Aubrey believes some of the Bible. And I said, as long as you believe in the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you are saved. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's interesting. Um, is that the only things that are necessary to be saved? Death, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Um, what do you What do you say, Paul? Well, I mean, if she believes some of the Bible, what are the parts of the Bible that she doesn't believe? I wonder, like, yeah, Jesus is being God, right? Um, did God actually write the Bible? Is it infallible? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, is that all that's necessary to be saved? Is the death, burial, and resurrection believing in that and trusting in that? Or okay, is it let's, all of God's word? Okay. Uh, let's comment on that. So, uh, code man, defender of the gospel, uh, that, was, uh, that was the one that made the comment. Is that right, Paula? Uh, Cody? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. That's yeah. Okay. That's Cody. Uh, so anyone want to comment on that? Um, what's necessary? What's necessary to well, just from the unity, liberty, and charity, mm-hmm. what we unite on? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that has anything. Uh, the death, burial, and resurrection isn't part of that. You know, I mean, it's it's in there. 
Yeah. But it's not the three that we, I mean, if somebody doesn't have the death, burial, resurrection, then they just can't have the truth anyways. But there's too many people out there who claim death, burial, and resurrection who still aren't saved. Right. So that's why we use the three points um, of, uh, I've coined it as the way, the truth, the life. Okay. The way being Jesus is the only way to the Father. Uh -huh. No works, no religion. Mm -hmm. So the Catholics believe in the death, burial, resurrection, but they certainly believe in works with the sacraments. They sure do. <laughs> That's and, right. Um, then the truth, like God be true and every man a liar, the truth that God himself came down and lived that perfect life, the deity of Christ himself. You have to believe that Jesus is the great I am. Mm -hmm. And the life that when you truly do believe, when a conversion is made, you are given, regenerated with the very life that Jesus resurrected from the grave with. The same power that resurrected him is the same that gives you life eternally right sure. here, right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so those three points are quite necessary for somebody to truly be saved. Yeah. And it's more than the death, burial, resurrection. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Cody did come back with a response saying, I'm just wondering if I said the correct thing to her. So, Cody, the answer to that would be, um, you know, after listening to Matthias, but before we before we package it up, does anyone else want to add to what Matthias said? Yeah, um, absolutely agree with Matthias. According to the scripture, that's absolutely right, because we have to be careful that we're defining what that means, just like he did according to the scriptures, because the occult... Sit, they believe in Christ, uh -huh. but which Christ? Oh, yeah, they have they more. Are, right, they have multiplicity of Christ. And in fact, they teach that you can bring Christ's consciousness, you know, consciousness and transcend and become the I am and all that stuff. Absolutely. And it's all the same words we use, but what they mean is not what the Bible means. Mm -hmm. So it's important to make sure that our thinking is in line with what the scripture declares. So if that person believes Jesus is God yeah. and he was crucified, buried and resurrected on the third day mm -hmm. as the payment for our sin, recognizing that they're a sinner. Then according to the scripture, they're saved. Otherwise, why do you need a savior? We're right. saving you from what? Yeah, good point. Saving you from what? Hmm. That's a really good point, Sister Lisa, because the Christ consciousness crowd doesn't even acknowledge sin or the that there is a judgment or consequence for sin. They believe that, uh, you know, Christ uh, didn't come to die for our transgressions against the holy God. They believe that Christ came to show us the way for us to ignite the divine spark that's within us they i mean the the stuff they come up with is clearly uh, uh unbiblical yet they uh. they happily use large portions of the bible in certain scriptures and they'll happily tell you that jesus was a great person and the bible's full of great wisdom but they will not believe that christ died for their sin for they like to uh, kind of, uh, you know, look at sin as, as it's not what we've been taught it is and that there's no such thing. And they, they like to think that, you know, Christ is, um, you know, just a just a great guy who's just all encompassing of love. He's the all in all and he's and we can have the same thing. And, you know, they, they really they really just reject who Christ is and they reject his word, um, the Bible as his word. And so yeah, they will they will Jesus. tell you Jesus you're right they'll tell you Jesus is a great guy but they will deny that Jesus was God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just make Jesus out to be a guru, just one of many. Yeah, he was a he was a good prophet, some people say. Good prophet, good man, um decent guy. 
you know, uh, some people even go as far as to say, oh, I, I believe the, uh, I believe a lot of stuff from the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> I don't think, so when they say that, I don't, I don't think they're fully aware of what they're even yeah. saying when they say that. Good luck, good luck trying to keep that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, or, or they say, oh, I like the uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I, I, I like that. I, I think that's good. I mean, they pick they pick little things Jesus said or that they might have heard the few times they were in church. And uh, yeah, they treat, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Sister Paula. I was just going to say, I've noticed that the world uh, will take a truth that God has in his word and reword it. Yeah. Because they see that there's value in it and wisdom in it. And oh, sure. a lot of the worldly wisdom that I lived by before I came to God, uh, I the the stuff that held true was actually biblical. They just changed the words. Yeah, same absolutely. principle was there. The same wisdom was there, but they oh. didn't, they weren't quoting the Bible. They just repackaged it. Oh, absolutely, and and they do that in the world all the time. I saw a, a Netflix uh, thing the other day where the the title of the episode was "Let the Dead Bury Their Dead." I mean, that was the title of it, and they said the line in the in the uh, on the show. They, they use things, like you said, Paul, they use things that they might switch around. This was a direct quote, though, but they didn't say Jesus said this. They just said it, and uh, it was just a line, and, and they, they have no idea what it even really means. Um, uh, and then other times, I think it's it's truth in plain sight. But that's another topic. But, uh, yeah, the world uh, has its own interpretation, uh, as uh, Lisa was saying, their own, or uh, Brother Dave was saying, their own Jesus uh, or uh, different Jesuses, multiple Jesuses, um, and uh, and uh, we we need definitely to be careful which one that we're following. Now, anyone that has the Holy Spirit that has their spirit quickened in them, they know which one it is. And these other things yeah. out there that they put out there, um, it's you know they're going to uh, sad be sadly mistaken when they stand before Him and God and Jesus says, "I never knew you." Um, so, but uh, to to put a bow on this and wrap it up, um, uh, Cody seems uh, like he thinks that that wasn't enough, and maybe it wasn't enough. And I, I want you to know, Cody, no one was trying to say that it was wrong. It's not wrong to say to someone necessarily that um, if they believe the gospel, it is important to fill it out for them. And uh, I think Matthias was rightfully concerned if the person that you were talking to, Cody, is saying that they don't believe all the Bible, I would definitely have more questions. Um, but it, 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 it's not necessarily that you did anything wrong. Um, uh, if you have a chance to talk to this person again, you have another opportunity to fill it in a little bit more after listening to the answers. A person just has to believe, has to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he uh, did die for the sins of the world to reconcile us with God and to understand that he is the son of God. He is all God. And uh, uh, he was in the form of a man and he came to die, was buried and uh, rose again and is at the right hand of the father. And he did all that to uh, reconcile us to God, God the father. Um so uh, people can get off into other little tangents and things like that. But if, but if a person believes that, um, uh, they're well on their way. Uh, there's a lot more. Uh, there's other things according to Scripture. You know, it definitely depends on um, if a person understands what the Scripture is saying. And, and we've gone over this in other ways before. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that say they're believers and they're not. Um, they think they are. Uh, some people think they are because they're born in a Christian nation. If they're born in America, and they say, "Oh yeah, of course I'm Christian," uh, that's a whole other, whole, whole other topic as well. Um, does anyone want to say any more about Cody's uh, question before we move on, or uh, Cody's situation? Uh, I would just suggest um, if he has a chance to talk to her again, just ask her. You know. Um, like which things, just out of curiosity, which yeah. things do you not believe about? And just, you know, go from there because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's either all true. Mm -hmm. If one little part of it's false, then it's 
then it's not the truth and it's not from God. Right. So, but that's extremely dogmatic. Yeah. <laughs> and you kind of don't want to, you know, come right out and say that. So just baby steps, you know? Yeah, I agree, Paul. Thank you for that. Um, and also, Cody, I would add to that, that uh, if you're concerned about this person, um, definitely just pray to God. I mean, he knows that you're, um, he cares about the person more than you do. As much as you care about another person, you, you have to understand that God cares about them more than you are, you're ever going to be capable of caring for them. Um, so talk to him about it, and uh, uh, he'll give you the strength to um, say the right things next time. Um, you're just planting seeds, bro. I mean, anyone we meet, um, we're either planting or watering, and God brings the harvest. So um, the Holy Spirit, if he's working in someone's life, uh, he will accomplish his task. He will not leave any... Uh, He'll, he'll not leave anyone out there alone if they're his. So that's a good thing. Uh, okay, any other praise reports or comments from the chat? Has anyone noticed? I am uh, scrolling through, but I... There's a question from JJ. Okay, bring it. Uh, I think it's a lady. She says, I think I know, but I will just ask, do you all think that the very fact that someone goes through our minds we are actually praying for them, even when we know not what to pray for. Hmm. Okay. Anyone want to weigh in on that? That's a good. That's actually a good question. Well, it could be that the Lord is placing them on your mind to pray for them. Uh huh. As well as you know, you you might be meditating on something they said to you. That's why it came back to your mind but usually when i when i get somebody on my mind and and it and it happens maybe even several times throughout my day then i i believe it's an unction from the lord to begin to pray for that person uh -huh. okay thanks lisa anyone else um i i kind of feel the same way especially if it's uh someone i'm not even thinking anything remotely close about they just pop into my head um even if it's not coming from god uh it's probably a really good thing to pray for that person anyway <laughs> so but i do yeah. think it is if it's just a random person that uh pops into my head i yeah. always believe that that's god telling yeah. me to pray for them or to consider them um, yeah because it's it's not the natural man state, you know. I think natural man is only concerned really with himself and those around him who could benefit him. Well, um, yeah. I, I mean, kind of. In, <laughs> in, our, in our worst state, that is kind yeah. of what natural man is like. But there is a love inside when you're renewed, and it's the love of God. Uh -huh. And um, he brings so much empathy and compassion uh, to me anyway for people that I never had before. Yeah. So oh, when yeah. I randomly think of a person, uh, I always think it's God thinking about that person and wanting me to think about that person, so. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Um, I think I agree that anytime someone pops in your mind uh, it uh, to pray, it's definitely not from the evil one. The evil one's not gonna bring people to your mind to pray pray about for sure so it's it's the, the to me it would be a, a a good idea to go ahead and pray for him um the other part of, of the jj's comment um about the holy spirit uh yeah the holy spirit does uh know um our heart and and i, I believe does communicate things that that our spirit uh or or that 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 we can't um bring up on our own he helps helps us um uh, bring things bring things out um uh, so if someone's coming in your mind that's not an excuse not to pray about it if the person's coming in your mind so i think it's a good rule of thumb as as the the con other people that have commented uh have uh, shared definitely if someone's coming in your mind just go ahead and pray for them it doesn't it, it definitely helps i believe um any prayer is good uh, so I want to Marine. Wait, so from I found Darlene. it. I found it, Brother Cripps. The uh, Marine retyped uh, Darlene's praise report. Go ahead. And she wanted to let us know that um, her grandson 
got his driver's license and they thought, you know, he was supposed to get a car, but it fell through. And then the Lord answered in the very same day. And, he, and now he has his own car, too. <laughs> awesome. Praise God. That's awesome. Um, things like that are interesting because uh, you hear some people talk about, oh, we shouldn't pray about people getting a car, or people with driver's license, like some things are too petty for God, but he doesn't care about the small things. What do you guys think about that? Does God care about the small things, the small decisions in our life? Now, I know for uh, for someone that just got their driver's license, it's not a small thing. I remember that for me when I turned 16 and got my driver's license. I actually had it at 15 because I lived in a state where um, you could drive at 15 with a, with a licensed adult in the vehicle. You could, and they do that for a year so you can kind of learn how to drive under supervision. And I think it's a good idea. Um, and then, but the minute you turn 16, then you can get your license. And it was no small thing to me, but I'm just saying from the outside. Um, first of all, that's, a, that's an awesome uh, praise report. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, worked out for your grandson. Um, but do 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 we think that God doesn't care about the the smaller things, or does He? Uh, I would argue He absolutely does. Uh -huh. I know when Jesus referenced, uh, He said it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. He was talking about expressly things that we don't tend to that can bring ruin. But also, if it's the little foxes that spoil the vine and there's little things that are important to us, why wouldn't it be important to our heavenly father? Ooh. Whom mm. the Bible says loves us beyond what we can even measure. And that if we know how to give good gifts being evil, how much more will our heavenly father give good gifts to them that ask him? So I disagree. There's times I have... Um, not been feeling well and pray for a park up front where somewhere I'm going mm -hmm. and I get a park up front and I thank the Lord for it because I was feeling pretty bad, you know, but to say that he doesn't care about the little things I would absolutely disagree with. And just to back up a little bit, the sister that asked about praying because we don't know what we're praying about uh, or we don't always know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible in Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to pray, what we should pray for as we ought. Mm -hmm. But the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be us. <clears throat> right. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Lisa. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So that, that wraps that up pretty well. Um, I saw a question here about possession, but I can't find it. Um, yeah, I have it here. Cause go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Back. Um, uh, Jesus is God says, I do have a question. Do you guys think a person can be under demonic possession, but still be saved? My mother definitely accepted Christ years ago, but she says demons control her with fear yet. They do not live in her. Okay. So that's what she, okay, that's what she's saying that the that they control her with fear yet they don't live in her. Okay. I think that's what he's saying. Okay. Well, I'll just say quickly that possession and oppression are two different things. Mm -hmm. Um but even with oppression, the mighty power of Jesus name can handle things uh in the spiritual sense. So, um I do not think that it is possible for a saint to be possessed mm -hmm. uh, by any means. Oppressed, um, you know, what, what is what is the fear that she's fearful of? Like if it's, if they're oppressing her with the fear that the Bible is not true, I, I, I would, I would keep preaching the gospel, but if she has fear that God won't provide for her or stuff like that, that would be the kind of oppression, fiery darts that could be coming her way. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep her in prayer. We will, but um, possession, no. Oppression, yes. Mm -hmm. But remember, Jesus' name uh, makes 
darkness dissolve because he is the light. Amen. Great. Thanks, Matthias. Anyone else want to weigh in on that? Yes, um, I do. Oh, okay, go ahead, Lisa. Just real quick. Uh, the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And this is what the devil does with his fiery darts. He attacks in the mind. So your mother needs to begin to speak the word over her life, rebuke the devil and be in agreement with Christ. Learn scriptures like Psalm 91. That's a good place to start your mother. Have Ooh. her read that every day. That is a powerful passage about what the Lord will do for those that are his and how he will protect you against all the wickedness in this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lisa. Welcome. Paula, go ahead. You're up next. Um, I was just going to say that I, I agree with Matthias and uh, Lisa, both of what they said. Um, but how I think about it is uh, um, possession is sort of taken over mm -hmm. a person. And just like we see in the Bible, the demon possession. Mm -hmm. And... Um, these demons were cast out. So they're like spirits. They need a host body yeah. to live in. I mean, they don't need one, but they do inhabit host. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they need an unclean host to inhabit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that they can inhabit a clean host because the place I think where the demons sit inside of a person in the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. I think it's the same place the Holy Spirit sits mm -hmm. in the believer. Yeah. So there's no way a demon's going to come into God's house mm -hmm. and take over. That's just not going to happen. God mm -hmm. is way stronger than any demon on earth mm -hmm. or anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but there is uh, oppression, certainly. Mm -hmm. Um but also I would caution, uh, maybe don't assume mm -hmm. that she is already saved. Right. Because um, I think that can be a little dangerous because maybe someone is continually telling themselves, well, I know I have this, I know this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe they don't. And I can see, because uh, I lied to myself for many years, I can see someone deceiving themselves and believing that they're good with God. They, you know, they believe the gospel, they believe the Bible, and maybe they don't really have God. And um, I would just say, if I had any kind of uh, notion of any kind of oppression from a demon at all, I would be on my knees praying. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Um, that's what takes care of those things. It's not like a ongoing, it's not like the exorcists <laughs> where, yeah. where they have to cast out the demon for like an hour. <laughs> Absolutely. That's not. just kind That's of right. like a show, you know? That's yeah. not how it works. They're cast out instantly in the name of Jesus. Um, but we have a portion of scripture that does tell us, and I can't remember where it's at, but it says that, um, you know, the guy sweeps his house and garnishes it and then the demon goes out of him and then he comes back and brings seven other uh -huh. demons with him mm -hmm. and i think that's a picture of showing like you can get a demon out of a person but if that person <laughs> doesn't then get saved or like at least draw towards god yeah. and the light yeah. that demon's going to come back with seven others yeah because it's so, I think there are like spiritual laws that we know very little about, but I think the Bible does allude to a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that a, a demon could be inside of a believer at all, but I do think they could mess with them. But yeah, I mean, telling them to go away in Jesus name, if that doesn't work, I, I mean, I don't know why that wouldn't work. Well, the only the, uh, according to to Jesus, the only way it would work is because some some types of of possession won't uh, won't come out without prayer right, and fasting. Right, only by prayer and fasting. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, but generally, I would agree with you, Paul, that uh, the, the the name of Jesus would uh, make the make the demon come out. 
Um, and I also, it was kind of funny. I was trying not to laugh, but when you're talking about the exorcist, uh, yeah, that is for show. That's not, it doesn't have to be a big dramatic thing with holy water and the bed going up and down and all that craziness. Um, uh, uh, so I hate to disappoint everyone, but I, I'm going to have to agree with everything everyone has said on this particular topic. Um, uh, I don't believe that if the Holy Spirit is in residence in a in the, I like the way you put it, Paul. The, there's a a place where the Holy Spirit resides in a person, um, and it's the same place that gets possessed if there's no one there and they're messing around where they shouldn't be messing. Um, I, I don't believe that uh, a demonic spirit can just jump into a person. I believe that they have to they have to be messing with things they shouldn't be playing with. Um, but if they if they do, uh, a possession can occur. And I also agree with what you said, Paula, that um, if you get the possession taken care of and oust the the demonic spirit. If you if you don't replace it with the Holy Spirit, then then uh, just as the Bible says, then they'll come back with more, and it'll be worse than your condition will be worse than it was uh, before. Um, but if the Holy Spirit is in residence, there is no way. I believe it's more than opinion. I believe that uh, Bible makes it, the Bible makes it pretty clear that they cannot be possessed if the Holy Spirit is truly in residence. And I, again, I would agree that, um, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to say this delicately because I, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but I, I believe there are a lot of people out there that pray to prayer or walk down an aisle. Uh, and, and trust me, I've met them. Um, I even, um, I have, have talked about being saved since I was five. I do believe that there was a, a presence in my life Holy Spirit has hand on me, and you can say it's because he knew that I would accept him eventually or whatever whatever words you want to use. Um, but I didn't have a full understanding at five years old. Um, I believe he was present in my life. I do, and no one can convince me otherwise. Um, and I was safe. Uh, but if something happens to you as a child um, and, and you don't understand what belief means, and I don't know the, the particular story about the person when they accepted the Lord, but uh, Paul was just uh, expressing caution to be used in that area because there are a lot of people that maybe they maybe they think that they accepted it and believed it and that they really have the gift and their, their dead spirit is quickened by the Holy Spirit. I, but one sure way uh, to tell is if there is a possession, then there's something wrong. There, there, there's something wrong because I, I don't believe it can happen without, uh, I mean, if the Holy Spirit is in residence. Um, I think we all answered that except for uh, Brother Dave. Brother Dave, do you have anything you want to add that hasn't been said already or just a uh, confirmation for us? Oh, uh, what's that on? Uh, possession? Mm -hmm. Well, the way I look at it is, you know, if you're born again of the Holy Spirit, um, I don't find any scriptural evidence. I've seen quote unquote deliverance ministries talk about demons can creep into your body or your soul, but not your spirit, or they try to divide up the temple. I personally believe, and it's just my personal belief that if you're born again of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not share its temple whatsoever with a demon. Amen. Once you're born again and you're uh, sealed by the Holy Spirit, a demon will oppress you from the outside uh, uh, through your mind, through um, setting snares or maybe using other people or trying yeah. to uh, uh, put a sense of fear or doubt upon you. Yeah. Uh, but I believe only a, a, a person who has yet to be born again uh, can actually house a demon. And so when it comes to such things, um, I've encountered uh, many demonically possessed people while out there in the streets evangelizing. And only will I touch one or pray for one who is uh, of somewhat of a sound mind that is looking for Jesus. Because if I pray for that demon to go and they don't receive the gospel, it's very dangerous. As you, as somebody brought up, uh, the demon will flee, but will bring back seven more stronger and, and it will try to destroy that person. And so if they, if they have zero interest in, in receiving the gospel, 
I'm just going to pray for them and leave it up to God. I'm not going to try to, 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 you know, pray for them or get the demon out uh, unless they're, they're willing to uh, seek after Jesus. Because if not, for me, that's very dangerous, and I, and I wouldn't want to put somebody through that. Interesting. Because it's, I mean, it's, it's been allowed to happen by the Lord several times uh, in my walk, and every <laughs> single time that it's happened, um, the person that, that was prayed for when, and, and, you know, the demon did not come out right away, but it did eventually come out. And that person did break and cry out to Jesus and, and put their faith, you know, they, they were seeking the Lord and it's happened probably, I would say almost 15 times that I can remember. Wow. And every single time I had no clue that it was about to happen. It just did almost like a divine appointment. Like I was just right there at the right place at the right time. And a lot of demonic activity there out there in Philadelphia, bro. Oh, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's uh, everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's in grocery stores. It's in, uh, Walmart. It's in, uh, you know, convenience stores. It's in churches. I've had people get up out of the church pew and walk away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy what God will show you sometimes, but my point was, is that every time it's happened, uh, never was I expecting it or looking for it. It just kind of dropped in my face and I just had to, you know, stand in faith in the Lord. But that per every single time the person would, would come to the, get the gospel, they would come, they were looking for Christ. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, you gotta be careful because if, if it say you get a demon out of somebody or, or the Lord removes a demon through your prayer or whatever, through your faith and, that person has no interest in, in, in bowing the knee to Christ or, or putting their trust on him. Uh -huh. And they walk away from that thing and say, oh, I feel better. And they don't, oh, I don't want nothing to do with Jesus. They, they're heading for destruction because that demon's coming back. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would agree that's, that's just That's just my understanding of it. And from, you know, I try not to base my experiences. You know, I try to interpret my experiences through the Bible. I try very hard not to interpret the Bible through my experiences. Right. But it's... um. It's just been that way. And like you said, you knew that God was with you from a young age. I've also felt that way. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's something that really blew my mind the first couple of times that it happened. But actually, the young guy that I was um, visiting tonight, who I'm discipling, when I, you know, I knew him from back in the day when we used to run the streets and get in trouble. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I came to the Lord and I got saved and I was already growing in the Lord. And I ran into him and he actually called me over to his house to talk to him. And he actually demonically manifested in front of me. It was the first time it ever happened. Wow. And so, you know, me being a young Christian at the time, not studied up on any type of deliverance or any type of anything, I literally was just about to run out of there. I, I really was. I'm just being honest. I was about to be like, okay, man, this is uh, out of my pay grade here. I don't know what's going on. But but I stood and I fought and I felt like the Lord said, just pray over him and 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 just stand in faith. And so I, I followed what I believe the Lord told me to do. And I did it. And after about 30, 35 minutes, he, he collapsed onto the floor. And, and when he came to, he was completely himself. And he, and he started to cry and he asked me, he was like, I, I need Jesus. How do I, you know, how do I get saved? And I just walked him through, you know, I prayed for him and I told him this prayer is not going to save you, but it'll point you in the right direction. And from there, man, he just sought the Lord. He, 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 he basically surrendered to the Lord uh, in faith right there in his living room. And, you know, a couple, as time went on, you know, God gave him desires to read the word. Go, you know, he came to church with me. He, you know, and now two years later, he he's solid in the Lord. He's born again. He's a child of God. Awesome. You know what I mean? So I've seen yeah. it happen and, and I don't I don't have the answers for it. But right. I know that that the demonic the demonic possession in lost people is real. Yeah. But being being a Christian, a born again Christian, and having a demon in you, I, I just don't see it. Right, I don't agree. You know, I Red think. Crips. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. I'm sorry. I just want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, there is another uh, view on. I think it's Matthew 17 uh, that everyone was referencing about. Let me go ahead and read in case the people in the chat are, are not familiar with it it's when uh in chapter 17 of matthew you start at verse 16 and it says and i brought him to the disciples and they could not cure him mm -hmm. this is a young man that was a lunatic 
and yeah. he was vexed and he was falling in, into the fire and often into the water. Yeah. And Jesus said in verse 17, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, yeah. how long shall I be with you? Mm -hmm. How long shall I suffer you? Mm -hmm. Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Yeah. The disciples, uh, then came the disciples to Jesus apart mm -hmm. and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and mm -hmm. it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And then he says, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now, most people presume that Jesus is referring to the demon. But there is another view that believes he was referring to their unbelief. And that the reason they couldn't cast the devil out, because that's the first thing Jesus says when, when they say, how come we couldn't cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief, mm -hmm. not because of your unbelief and you didn't pray and fast. So they, there are people that believe, and I, I happen to be one of them, okay. that he is referring to the unbelief and to correct unbelief requires prayer and fasting. Mm. That's just another take I wanted to submit to. Oh, yeah, wow. thanks. thanks I'll Lisa. have to reread that. And that's that's a good point, Lisa. I've I've heard that, and that's a really good point. And I've heard even another point beyond that. It's a it's a it's another alternate view, where that type of spirit. I believe earlier in the chapter, Jesus called it a specific type of spirit. Am I am I correct when it says that it was either like a dumb spirit or a mute spirit? In this chapter, it was called, hold on, it was right there in verse, it was lunatic. Yeah. And have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and okay. sore vexed, for he oftentimes falleth into the fire and off into the water. Yeah. And in the other gospel account of, I think there's another gospel account of that same one. I think it mentions either deaf, dumb, or mute spirit. And when Jesus says this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting, there's a view that that says we, you know, through faith, not unbelief. You're definitely right on that. But through our faith, we can uh, help people get set free by casting the demons out. But there's a certain type of demon, I think, in one of the gospel accounts where I just heard somebody say it this way, that only a, a mute or a dumb or a deaf spirit. That's the only type of spirit in Satan's kingdom that has to come out through prayer and fasting. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sure you didn't mean to, uh, Brother Dave, but I kind of walked all over uh, Paula's comment. She was starting to say no, something. No, I definitely didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. I'm sure you did. No, 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 he didn't. I was okay. just saying that that was a really interesting point and that I'll have to pay attention the next time I read that. Okay. I never Never can that's that's it. He didn't interrupt me. No, oh, no, 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 no problem. I apologize. It, it it was right on top of it, and it just sounded like that to me. So <laughs> I'm I, sorry. I, I didn't mean to. No, no. I withdraw my comment. I was. I, I don't want anyone. Uh, I want everyone's thoughts to be able to to be presented. That's all. Uh, uh, so it's fine. Um, so does anyone want to comment uh, more on that, and then uh, we can uh, see if there's any other questions. I don't want to spend the whole time on this one. A topic if there are other comments out there um, but uh, I will throw in on this thing uh, I'm not saying that uh, that Lisa's comment is incorrect at all I, I mean I, I I'm gonna look at it uh, again as well uh, but brother brother uh, Dave is kind of asserting what I believe is that there are there are different levels there's a hierarchy of possessions hierarchy of demons, a higher hierarchy of uh, fallen angels, they don't all have the same powers and abilities. Uh, so I believe some may be more difficult to uh, cast out. Um, and it would definitely depend on the person doing it. Oh my gosh, it would depend on the level of faith of the person that's casting out whatever, whatever level the uh, spirit it is would depend on the person that's, that's uh, doing it 
um, uh, their level of faith. Uh, so I think they're both right. I, I think it, it, this particular story, obviously Jesus was able to do it. He's He's God. I mean, I don't. I would say that there's no demon. There's there's no high level demon that wouldn't go out when Jesus is casting them out. Um, so for us, I mean, there are people out there that think that we have the same powers as the as the apostles do today. That 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 we have all the same abilities, and I think that's up for debate. Um, but if if your level of faith is uh, is at an all time high, you know you're you're believing and you're trusting in the name of Christ to cast out a demon. Um, uh, it, it can certainly happen. Um, so does anyone else want to comment on what Brother Dave said? And then we can see if there's any other uh, uh, questions to questions or comments. Okay. Um, I had been waiting to uh, read a comment. It was like a, a praise report and a uh, a prayer request. And um, I've been having a little bit of trouble with my scrolling bar. I've actually ordered a new mouse and I can't find it now. Um, someone was saying their 50 year old sister was getting out of jail. Oh, there it is. Uh, Clary says, uh, my sister got out of jail yesterday. Her 50th birthday is today. Pray that she can be free of drug and alcohol, uh, demons of addiction. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'm glad that she's out of jail and happy birthday to her. And uh, we'll definitely, people, please pray for uh, this person uh, to be free of drugs and uh, addiction. Addiction's a, a terrible thing. People get wrapped up in that. Um, I think we've all we've all known someone that has dealt with that. Uh, do, has anyone else seen any comments uh, or topics to discuss? Uh, I saw one a while back from okay. it's that Kendrick girl KK. Okay. Um, she says, "Is God trying to tell me something, or is it just Satan trying to get into my head?" Oh. I mean, Trying to get into my mind. I'm sorry. I okay, good one. What do, you, what do you have to say about that, Paula? Um, don't ask me to go first. Okay, oh, that's no problem. <laughs> I'll go after I hear what everybody else says. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to what we, we kind of hit on this earlier. Uh, I think there's there are ways to tell if it's the Holy Spirit or if it's a demon uh, or if it's you. Um, and I believe that as a person grows in, in him and he, he, um, he or she uh, is being made into the likeness of Christ, what, what I would like to see, oh, let me just speak personally for myself. What I would like to see is the more and more I grow closer to him, the more and more I seek his face, the more and more he works in me and through me. Um, I want there to be no difference between if it's a thought that I have or it's the thought the Holy Spirit brings up in, in me. I want them to be the same. I want to be walk so closely with him that I don't have to decide whether a thought that I have or, or uh, something in my spirit is, is, is him or me. Um, but I definitely want to recognize when it's, uh, when it's an evil thought or if it's from my flesh or if it's, um, uh, it's a, if it's a thought from the outside. Um, and again, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, all we have to do is pray and talk to him. And, and I believe he'll give us confirmation of where the thought comes from. Uh, that's my comment so far. Does anyone want to weigh in on that? Brother Dave? Well, yeah, I mean, I think we, you know... It's really tough, you know, because because eventually God will confirm. It. Listen, if God is trying to get your attention, mm -hmm. I believe it will get louder and louder and more obvious um, mm -hmm. eventually. Like God will let you walk into a brick wall several times and mm -hmm. then he'll just be like, OK, he's not hearing or she's not hearing. Now I'm going to get there. Like if it's coming from God and he's really trying to lead you, he's going to get your attention. And it's usually going to be accompanied with some type of peace, comfort, or confirmation. 
Um, and if it's, you know, coming from the enemy or, or, or from yourself, it, it usually is, um, you know, accompanied with confusion and doubt and, and uncertainty and just a restlessness. And that's the way I've always um, carried it. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I think it's interesting that I, I love this particular topic. It, it ties into something else a little bit, but it's in how God talks to people. Because we we hear um, he speaks in a still small voice, right? To some, to some that's the way it comes. To Job, he, he talked to him in the whirlwind. I love that. I love that idea uh, uh, that he that he does that um, with some. I believe he talks to people in different ways. I believe that each uh, relationship with God as uh, individual um, doesn't mean that uh, one person doesn't go by the Bible and another person does, or one person has some kind of special uh, special knowledge that's not available to anyone else or anything like that. I just uh, think that he speak to speaks to us in the ways that he knows will reach us best. So what what Dave was saying that he'll let us uh, run into the wall uh, and stuff, and then eventually he'll get to the point where it's like, okay, he's not hearing me. Um, I'm not I'm not arguing that uh, that point. I, that's happened to me. I mean, there there have been times when God was trying to to talk to me, and He will indeed let us uh, fall uh, so that we'll turn to Him. He'll put us on our back. Uh, so that we've got nowhere to look but up, uh, and that's happened to me as well. Um, uh, but he will speak to us. If we're his child, he will do whatever he needs to do to communicate with us. Uh, with Moses, he spoke to him uh, through a burning bush. Um, uh, with, uh, with Saul, he met him on the road and appeared to him uh, and, and talked to him directly. Uh, not everybody has that. Not everybody has a direct audible or uh, uh, physical manifestation of God. Uh, some people do. And Elijah, it was in a still small voice. I think they call him Elias now, but when growing up, it was Elijah for me. Um, so it's, it's different ways. Uh, but getting back to the topic uh, as far as, you know, how do we determine, though, uh, whether it's uh, the Holy Spirit or whether it's ourselves or whether it's uh, a spirit on the outside that's trying to get into our minds. Paula, are you ready to make a comment? Yep, you um, sure are. Yeah, I could. See, I could go, because when I first read it, I was thinking one thing and then i started thinking something else so i was okay. not quite sure see you waited that's why you like to wait and and think right. about it before you answer that's good um because i have wondered myself a thought that i had is this from god is this from the enemy mm -hmm. because it could be neutral Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not a particular, oh, no, that's from the enemy because that's against God. N nothing mm -hmm. so obvious as that. Yeah. Um, but I do remember a time that um, several years ago I was hearing some preaching. And the person preaching uh, was saying something that basically made the way to God a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. And I... I started thinking, yeah, so sure, my loved ones could could be saved if I think about it like this, and okay. you know, and um, and I was praising God for it. I thought it came from. I was like, this is such a great revelation, and praise God, more people are saved than I think because I, I really, you know. Anyway, <laughs> mm -hmm. so the next morning, I woke up and my spirit was like, that's the first thing that was on my mind. And mm -hmm. my spirit was like, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I got up and I made breakfast and I, and throughout the whole day, I just, it was, was bugging me until I worked it out, mm -hmm. praying to God. And he showed me that wasn't him that showed me that. And that was a lie. Mm -hmm. And he, here's the confession. I had to think back, you know, I actually had been drinking that night. Okay. And I was, you know, I, I understood in that moment what the Bible talks about when it talks about men with itching ears, mm -hmm. because what this guy was saying was so comforting and, sure. you know, it was like, 
a really good lie. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was from God. And the moment I was clear headed, my spirit would not let that go. Okay. And so, uh, I prayed about it and he showed me, nope, that was from the enemy. And I was really yeah. shocked that I could have been so blindsided like that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you put yourself in any sort of inebriated state, there is, yeah. they're called spirits for a reason. They are. They are. We could do a whole show on that. Yeah, yeah. they are called spirits for a reason. Um, yeah, we can block. I believe there are ways that we can block, um, block his... Uh, our block our discernment from the Holy Spirit and alcohol is certainly one of those. I'm not saying that every time someone drinks that it automatically means that they can't hear from the Holy Spirit, but certainly in your story, Paula, you believe that it did. And, and um, I, I, I believe that's possible, um, especially in drunkenness. I mean, we're advised not to get to that level of inebriation um, and I've said on other shows before, I believe that when you do that, you remove the goalie. I mean, you, you, you pretty much you're open to anything. And that includes oppression, which ties into something we talked about. Um, for a believer, if they're drunk, I don't believe they're able to be possessed. But you're, you're kind of opening yourself up to oppression, that's for sure, certain levels. Um, but getting back to the point, um, anything we do... Um, uh, can uh, make it harder to hear him, to hear God. But if we're if we're open to it, um, uh, he he will keep uh, coming. Uh, and as you said, Paul, you couldn't get it out of your mind. I believe that's what it is, and that's kind of what Brother Dave was saying. That it, it, if it's from the Holy Spirit, it'll keep coming back. He's, he's not going to let it go if it's from Him. If He's trying to get our attention, I believe if. He's trying to get our attention. He will get our attention, and he'll use whatever means possible. And I, I use uh, uh, Jonah as an example of that. Jonah ran away from God, and even Jonah knew what he was doing was wrong. He knew. And and when the storms came and their ship's about to go down, he, he said, "I this is because of me. He, he knew. He knew that he was running from God. So uh, God will send whatever storms or tribulations or uh, whatever, or, or good things, whatever, whatever he needs to do to communicate with the person, as I was saying earlier, he will do it if we're his children. He'll make it clear to us, I believe. Um, if that's all on that topic, I do have one I want to hit really quick. Uh, earlier, Richard Arena said, is the DMT in our pineal gland a gateway to hell? Question marks. Does anyone want to hit that one at all? Um, I, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but it's a gateway to something. And I would stay away from it. Yeah, definitely definitely stay away from it. I, I feel I, I have done a little bit on this. And, and for those of you listening that, I mean, we won't talk about this very long, but DMT is a drug that people are taking. And apparently it... It, uh, it, it removes the goalie in a, in a way where you're in... Some people think that you're in the um, astral plane and and all that, but what we what we do know for sure is it it opens uh, gateways in your perception for sure, and uh, leaves a person susceptible to uh, demonic communication. Um, now uh, the New Agers take this a, a completely different way. And they believe that, um, you know, aligning your chakra and, and uh, that you don't need DMT to do it. You can just astral project anytime you want. And they mess around in that realm. Um, now, I, I am not, I've never messed around with it. So uh, I, I'm ignorant as far as whether it's even possible. But certain people swear that you can do it anytime and it's not a big deal. Um, uh, but there, they, there are some people that even go further to say that our bodies themselves are set up in a way that if we can access our pineal gland, then uh, we're little G, uh, little G gods. We can access that, and that we should through yoga and through meditation and through all these other means that we should be engaging in these practices in the astral plane. And uh, we should all be doing that to access our lordship, access our God status. Um, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, anyone else? Oh, 
Yeah, I heard a long dissertation. It was actually very good by two believers who was exposing this probably about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see if I could find the video to uh, put a link in the description. If I find it, I'll put it in there. But uh, they talked about this was coming and how people were doing this stuff and going, you know, into the sunken place and all this old weird stuff. And a lot of people were saying that when they did these experiences, um, you know, it's like they open themselves up to the spirit world. They can actually see what our eyes cannot see. And that stuff is blocked to us for a reason, beloved. Mm -hmm. So when you, if you start playing with that stuff, you're opening yourself up to the demonic. It is not a way to reach the most high. The Bible is very explicit on how we're to communicate with God. And that ain't it. Amen, Lisa. Amen. 100% agreement on that. That ain't it. <laughs> That's good. Anyone else? Well, that stuff makes me so angry, man. That okay. that, that stuff drives me nuts. These people swear that if you unlock your third eye, you're going into some higher dimension, and that's where yeah. you'll find the real divine truth. These people are knuckleheads. God forgive me, these people are stupid. And they just and they play around and they and they think, you know, <laughs> they think that because they have some type of vision or some type of dream or some type of whatever they see in that realm that it's oh i must have unlocked some hidden truth no it's exactly what the bible says you're going right into the realm of satan uh -huh. and 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 it just it irritates me to no end and i i ugh. well brother dave here's the other thing you hear the reports of people who make it back if they're even telling you the truth, because if it's lying spirits, how you know what they're telling you is the truth? Most of that stuff is a call to pull people in to trick them. Yes. What about all the people who never make it back because they died playing with that stuff? Yeah. Yep. Or they get infested with divination. They get infested with, with familiar and lying spirits. Yep. And the Bible tells us. The reason that we do not go above and beyond what is written is because there is a place that is real. Ephesians 6 says principalities mm. and powers in high places of wickedness. Yeah. God tells us not to go above and beyond what is written for our own good. Mm. But these people, they are naturally rebellious to God and they are going to do what they want, how they want, and they'll believe anything. Mm -hmm. And because they experience it, they now think it's it, it somehow trumps. You know, I get so irritated because these new age people, they say that Christians are stupid. Christians mm -hmm. are unintelligent. Christians are like birds trapped in a cage of a religious box. And they, they need to awaken. They need to uh, enlighten. And, and, and no, we don't. We're safe in the hands of our father. You guys are the idiots going out there running into the arms of Satan. Yeah, and it also shows they don't have they don't have any understanding of who we are. They act like Christians just came out of a a cornflake box. When in Seriously. fact, <laughs> most of these people don't realize we came from demonic trash and we came to faith in Christ. There are plenty of people who played with the occult, played with the devil himself, played with witchcraft, pharmacia, all manner of evil, and when they found Jesus, they abandoned that trash. That we're not stupid. We're not unenlightened. We found the truth. Mm, that's right. And the truth set us free, and the truth bears witness in our spirit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Amen. Yeah. Um, uh, Brother Dave, you hit on something a little bit with that with that uh, uh, DMC, uh, DMT and stuff. Um, it, uh, Ivan Vogg said in the chat, it's dangerous, and I would agree with that, and, and other people in the chat seem to agree. Uh, most people do agree that it's dangerous to do that. And that's this is what I was referring to earlier. When you uh, open up your your mind to these things, um, it, you are opening yourself up. As I said earlier, you're messing with things you shouldn't be messing with, and you're inviting possession. You really are. And of course, the first time someone does DMT and they go into this or whatever place they go into, yeah, these lying spirits aren't going to, uh, uh, the first time, they're not going to come forth as who they are. Um, uh, you know, it might even be pleasant. I, I hear some stories about how they're, 
you know, monkey faces and they're laughing and they're saying, come play with me and blah, blah, blah. Um, they're, they're, they're probably going to present themselves as friendly. And a lot of, a lot of people think that they're spirit guides. They come across as friendly. Let me help you with your finances. Bingo. Let me help you with your, said. Bingo. Yeah. Let me help you with your life. And um, then they, they, they keep engaging in these activities. And then once they're, I, I, I like the infestation word you use, Brother Dave, they're infested with these spirits then. And then they got you. They, they have you because you've opened yourself up. You're, you've opened your third eye. You've gone a different way. As Paul was saying, you've gone a different route. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear, which... Uh, or Lisa, I, I think, did I say Paul? I, uh, I meant Lisa. Lisa was saying, um, you've, you've gone a different way than what scripture says. Uh, and it, the Bible makes it very clear of what the way is that we're told to go. We're, we're told to come to God through Christ. That's it. Not through meditation, not through yoga, not through, not through DMT or open our third eye. None of that's biblical. Yeah. We're supposed oh to have God, a relationship. Brother, uh Brother Cripps, I'm so glad you said yoga. I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. Okay. No, there is nothing Christian about yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was taken from the occult. They realized back in the day, oh, let's say prior to the end of the 60s, they were never going to get people to outright worship the devil. Right, so what right. they did was they took all these little occult practices like transcendental meditation, mm -hmm. hypnotism, yoga, mm -hmm. all this different stuff and broke it up and introduced it into society in bite-sized chunks. Yeah. So people would take it. And yep. it's not just yoga. I don't want to pick on yoga. Yoga, Zumba, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. That is dangerous. They see your body was designed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. These foul, wicked spirits are knockoffs. They they can only operate within the parameter that God set. Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Spirit doesn't inhabit a person, these unclean spirits desire to inhabit a person. And so what they have to do is try to trick people to get in agreement with them and invite them in. Mm -hmm. And so trying to open up your third eye, reach the top level of the chakra, right. all this stuff is you getting in agreement with them. And if you ain't saved before you know it, you have a demon living on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. If you are saved, you can be vexed by these spirits because you opened up a door to them. Mm -hmm. So you have to get against that demonic agreement and break it in the name of Jesus sure. and with the blood of Jesus and rebuke mm -hmm. it and uh, repent of that mess and turn from that crap. Throw the witchcraft books out if you have them. Mm -hmm. You know, the in Corinthians, it talks about these people have been saved two years and they brought their witchcraft books to be burned. Mm -hmm. Well, what were they doing with witchcraft, witchcraft books, let alone for two years? Because mm -hmm. yeah. Christians were doing that stuff. Yeah, they're doing it now in the church. You got the angel cards and whatnot. No, oh, gosh, Lord. that stuff drives me nuts. Yeah, it does. But uh, that's a great point, Paula. Thank you for making it. Yeah, uh, these are things that a believer shouldn't be messing with to begin with. Um, and when you open uh, open your, your spirit to things like that, and unfortunately, I liked what you said, Paula. It's the little bit-sized chunks to Lisa. make it yes. out. Yes. Lisa. Sorry. I keep getting the names mixed up. I apologize. That's okay. I think Paula's a beautiful name. It's all right. It is. Both right. names are beautiful. <laughs> both names are beautiful. And both of you are beautiful sisters in Christ. So uh, I, I try to keep it straight. Um, I talk to Paula more, Lisa, frankly. Uh, so uh, that's probably why it happens. Um or being Brother, sure. I'm not offended in Lisa. It's okay. I told you I'm bad with names myself. So thank you so much. Thank you. Get for you your guys break. mixed up. Forgive me in advance. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, I think we're all on the same page on this one. Now we did start a little late. Usually I, I think brother Luke tries to cut it off about 11. Uh, so we did go almost an extra 15 minutes. Um, I don't want to leave anyone out. So if anyone sees any comments that were made that we uh, glazed over, could you bring them up now for me? That would be awesome. I don't want to leave anyone out before we say goodnight. Hey, Brother Cripps, while everyone's checking in the comments, can I ask you a personal question that oh. I would love to hear your personal answer to? 
Please, thank you. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Okay, let's say you're under attack for preaching the finished works of Christ. Let's say mm -hmm. you're under attack for preaching eternal security. Mm -hmm. Now, if the person attacking you makes a claim that you are deceiving many because you are teaching that Jesus died for all our sins and not just our past sins. According to Romans 325, Jesus only died for our past sins. Mm -hmm. This is what they say. How do you refute them and show them that Jesus died for our, all of our sins, including future ones? Wow, great question. Uh, well, first of all, and I feel very strongly about this, any preaching that we're doing uh, as far as grace is concerned and the things that we know and hold true as believers, I think that people take too much time answering our attackers. They, they, they in many ways give them credence by uh, spending time in my, this is just my opinion, you ask me a direct question. For me, I, if I was being attacked about these things, I would refute what's being said but I wouldn't mention any names. I wouldn't say so-and-so is attacking me. I wouldn't be so-and-so made a video about me and here's what they said. I would not give it any credence whatsoever. I would keep preaching the same gospel uh, that we know to be true, that that is in his word and 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 stay firm in that position. That's, that's the first point. Um, as far as the second part of the question, um, to me, it's very clear in scripture that when Jesus died over 2000 years ago, he died for past, present, and future sins before any of us in this conversation were ever born. All of our sins were paid for on the cross. Um, to me, it's 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 plain and simple in this idea that uh, only the sins were covered up until the time that you became a believer. And then after that, you better watch out because any sins that you do, there's no more sacrifice for your sins and they get that all mixed up and confused. All of our sins were paid for on the cross, all of them. Um, as far as I would have to do a little bit more research to come up with the actual, I don't think that's what you're asking me for, the actual scripture references that would prove that out. Um, but uh, I do believe it's important, but when it comes to attacks from other people when they're coming against you, uh, I wish that people would just leave it alone and just keep just keep preaching the same stuff. Don't give them, don't give them any time, don't give them any credence in uh, fighting a battle with them, I think it, it, it can be distracting and it takes you off the focus what, where the Holy Spirit wants you to focus on anyway. Um, that's my opinion. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. No problem whatsoever. Um, anyone else want to comment on that? It's that verse. It's Romans 3.25 where it says, the forgiveness of sins past they hang on that as if Jesus only cleansed us up to a point and from here on out we better oh boy we better you know we better clean ourselves up mm -hmm. okay the only one that I can recall quickly out of my head is Ephesians 1 7 it says you know being in Christ it's the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin yeah absolutely or when Hebrews 10 says that Christ died once it's once and for all sacrifice or um you know, little children, I write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you're, you're right. It's just not, you can't pay them any mind or attention, but it's hard when they come in groups of 10 or groups of 15 and they just swarm and, and they attack and it's like, wow, <laughs> it's just too much sometimes. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I would like to uh, uh, comment. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Um, sometimes uh, the King James, the way that it's worded, is um, very poetic, kind of, kind of like a beautiful kind of language. And uh, I don't think that we really talk like that so much anymore. So sometimes I actually like to look at um, other Bible versions and see how they translated that uh that passage mm -hmm. and I found a couple of interesting ones the new King James says whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed so I think like he's talking about um, even before the crucifixion 
The New Living Translation says, For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. Wow. 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 I just saw, I just heard that scripture in a whole new light. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so glad you commented, Paula. Perfect. That basically saying, it's basically saying that through Jesus Christ, Sins that were committed before his death, burial, and resurrection right. have been forgiven. Exactly. It's not talking about us in the present. It's talking about Jesus being the one they looked forward to. Their sins of the past were forgiven. Oh, wow. I just heard that in a whole new light. Right. Well, that's it goes to show how salvation has always been the same. Boom. It's Good thing. I would see. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, anyone else? No? Anybody okay. in the chat got prayer requests? Yeah, prayer requests or any final comments before we say goodnight, guys? We'll wait a second to see if there's anything. Uh, we, we definitely, I, I you know, I, I've definitely enjoyed the broadcast. Um, uh, Hendrick said Switch had a question, so let's try to find that. While you're looking for that, Brother Cripps, I just want to remind everybody, especially the panel, let's lift up um, Brother Daniel Stone. Oh, okay. Let's lift him up in prayer tonight. Um, I I seen the brother was contending uh, with some with some wolves, and you know he's he's constantly getting in the mix and standing up for the truth, and he's. You know, he constantly has, uh, uh, um, you know, people's back and he's, he's, you know, standing up for the truth and he's, he's doing this in the, in the midst of wolves. So I know he's being drained. I know he's being vexed. So let's just remember to lift up brother Daniel in prayer for strength tonight as well. Okay. Thank you, brother Daniel. No problem. Uh, okay. So I see a question from switch and Hendricks just tell me if this is the right one. So it says question, uh, John eight. 42 through 58, how many times do you think Jesus said he was God if you think he did? I want your opinion on this. I had a talk about this with someone earlier. Several times. Yeah. He would, he would either be a liar or a straight up lunatic if he's not Lord. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Yeah. Before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say... I am God, yeah. other than I'm the son of God, which the Jews knew exactly what that meant. Uh -huh. yeah. But in several places, I, if, if they don't understand before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. That goes back to what Paul was saying earlier. Do you just have to believe the death, burial, resurrection, or do you believe the whole Bible? Yeah. And so uh, that great I am. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You answered the question. Thank you, Matthias. And Hendricks actually answered Switch's question uh, shortly after he asked it. Uh, Hendricks said, uh, he says it a lot of times, LOL. And then so you backed that up, made it very, very clear. Um, I don't think there's any, uh, any way that a person studying scripture would have any doubt that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, he is both God and man. Um, yep, Switch just said it, Brother Cripps. Yeah, uh, Jesus said unto them, uh, if God were your father, you would love me, for I pr uh, proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. That's verse 42. That's John eight forty-two. I think that's a clear uh, uh, picture being painted. Yeah, yeah, I think it's clear. I think it's clear. Okay, um, I'm ready to say goodnight, guys. If you are, I've started working again, so I have to, um, I'm having to get up earlier, which I praise God for because now I'm able to work instead of just, I mean, I'm grateful for the time I spent taking care of my grandma, but that period of time was very difficult for me not to, not to be producing uh, uh, income and, and all that. So I'm thrilled to, to be uh, productive and to get up every day and, and uh, do something um uh that's worthwhile for me and uh for my future and i'm i'm so grateful to god for that 
Um, hey Amen. Thank God for that. He's, you know, he's always on time, Brother Cripps, and he'll. He is always on time, Brother Dave. <laughs> he's on time, even when, even if we're not comfortable with his time, his his time is the right time. I know that. You know what? The older I get and the more mature he makes me in him, um, I don't question that at all anymore. I really don't. I, I, I understand that I have to be patient and wait on him. I know that if I'm praying for something, the answer is going to come, even if it takes a while. I believe that. Um, Amen. And thank God it's getting easier for me. And it's not because I'm a great dude. It's just because he's great in me. And um, yeah, we can all have that. Uh, and so I want to say that if there are any, any, anyone that's been praying for something for a long time, trust me. Or you don't have to trust me. Trust his word. Trust the promises in his word. He will answer your prayer. It may not be the answer you want in the timing that you want it, but he will answer it. Man, you know, oh my gosh, he's so good. All right, praise reports. You want a praise report? I'll give you, a, I'll give you one. I wasn't going to open up publicly about this, but God is too good. My oldest son, um, there was a discrepancy about two and a half, three years ago between his mother and I, where I was given some bad information, bad address, bad cell phone. Uh, I've called, left messages, texted. Long story short, I didn't talk to my oldest son. After they moved away, I didn't talk to him for almost three years. Mm -hmm. I prayed every single day that God would touch his heart to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. And on September 1st, at 12.01, lunchtime i went on break and i got a phone call from a strange number and when i answered it it was my son wow and so for three years of not talking to my oldest he turned 21 mm -hmm. on september 1st it was his 21st birthday the last time i seen him uh was when he was 18 they moved away i was given i was sent a letter that was given you know not not of any doing of his but obviously it was his mother mm -hmm. and I was given, you know, a false address and a false phone number and I was devastated and it broke me. And I lived with this, this heaviness for the past three years, wondering how, how would I contact him? How would I get in touch with them? They're not on Facebook. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no email. There's no way to get a hold of them. So I just kept praying, kept praying, kept praying. Mm -hmm. And somehow he was, you know, led to, uh, find his grandmother, my mother, and and he reached out to her. Ooh. She gave him my cell phone number, and then he called me while I was on lunch at work. And I'm telling you, man, I broke down, and it was like the Holy Spirit was all over me, and I just I couldn't even keep my legs still. I was just praising God, like His timing mm -hmm. is is impeccable. Yeah. And and you know, I I honestly thought I I don't know when I was going to talk to my son again, my oldest son. I had my little my youngest son with me. But my oldest son, a three-year separation, it was tough. And it was a very big uh, monkey on my back. And, mm -hmm. and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And just, you know, it was just a couple days ago that he called. And I'm telling you, I, I had no clue. I had no clue if, if I was ever going to speak to him again. I had, I don't know nothing. You know, I was in the dark. And and God just, he just moved, man. And, and, and when I answered that phone, I, there was nothing I could do but just praise God, man. I just went, you know what I mean? I just broke. Yeah. I just broke under the glory of God and just cried out to him and just thanked him. Mm, of course you did. What a wonderful moment that is. I love. I like, I like the way you phrased that. What else could you do, Brother Dave, in that moment? <laughs> and then, you know, and here's how good God is. I thought he was going to be so angry at me because I thought he was going to think that I abandoned him. And yet, and yet when I told him about the misinformation that I got, his response was, was a godsend because he said, I know I figured it out. Mm. He said, I know that, you know, my mom is still my mom, but she wasn't being honest with me and I figured it out. Mm. So I reached out to you. I said, son, you don't understand that person, whoever cell phone number that was, they got at least 10,000 text messages. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they they got they got at least a uh, hundred thousand full mailboxes voicemails. I kept reaching out, kept reaching out. He said, "I know, I know." And when he told me that it's okay, that he forgave me, and that he loved me, all that pressure. Can you imagine what I was feeling, right? And all that pressure, and all that doubt, and all that fear, and all that 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 just uncertainty just crumbled and it was the grace of God that filled me up instantly. And when, when I heard my son say, I forgive you and I love you and it's okay, it was a mistake. Yeah. Now we can keep in touch. I was just floored, man. Mm, wonderful, 
Well, Dave, that's that's a great way to end the broadcast, man. Honestly, that's so awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, Dave. Praise I, God. I, I, I fell down in the middle of the driveway like a I'm I'm six foot two, two hundred seventy five pounds. I look like a freaking offensive lineman, and I just fell down on the ground and cried like a baby for like twenty minutes in the middle of the day. Dropped my cell phone and everything and just lift my hands up in the air and was just crying out to God. I was so thrilled. I couldn't believe Amen. it. Amen, bro. I couldn't Amen. believe it. Amen. Well, Exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Man, you I ain't even embarrassed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. That that what God did right then and there. With, with, I mean, it was it was it was hard to to sleep at night and the anxiety that I held inside. I, you know, I don't want my son to. Uh, uh, regret me or hate me or you know think that I abandoned him and 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 you feel helpless because you have no way to contact there's you know all you have is an address and a cell phone number that's wrong from the beginning mm -hmm. and so what can you do you're helpless and so all you could do is give it to God and when my son said I forgive you and I love you and it's good to hear from you I I just broke, man, because I of thought he course. was going to say, I hate you. You yeah. abandoned me, blah, blah, blah. And I thought I was going to have, you know, it was going to be this big uh, discrepancy. But no, it was smooth. It was perfect. It was all, all of God, man. All of it. Praise God. That is awesome. Thanks, bro, Dave. Thanks for sharing that with us. And praise God for that. I mean, they're, they're, what else can I say? Uh, that's an amazing story. There's, there's a lot of people out there that are uh, estranged from their, from their kids and uh, a lot of times they don't get a happy ending like that but god certainly gave you one there fantastic so i said we can never stop praising god man even in our storms even in our failures even in the times of our confusion even in the times of our disobedience even in the times where we don't we don't understand what's going on or we don't necessarily agree with what's going on it doesn't matter, man. Come hell or high water, God deserves praise, honor, and glory. And if we are his children, we're going to learn. We're going to learn that he's good and that that even though we go through things that, that don't seem good or that other people in the world may knock us for or down us for, God's got a purpose in everything, even mm -hmm. in the pain. God's yeah. got a purpose for everything, even in the trials, the roadblocks, the U-turns. Mm. All of it has a purpose, and God is going to use it for his good, and he's going to use it for your good. Whether you need to grow spiritually, whether you need to uh, humble yourself, whether you need to uh, uh, whatever it is that God needs to teach you and, and, and shape you and mold you in, he'll use many different circumstances, even if it hurts you to your core. But in the end, God will use it for good if you just keep trusting him and keep praising him and keep giving him the honor he deserves. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right, let's uh, just each take a minute. I think uh, Brother Luke sometimes asks everyone at the end what they, how they felt about the fellowship tonight. So um, let's just each make a brief comment on how you feel like it went tonight. And say your goodnights to the chat, and then I'll close us up. Uh, why don't we start with you, Brother Dave, since you were just talking. Go ahead. and uh, I, just, I just said a mouthful. Okay. Just, that's all I want to do. I just want to give God the glory. I want to thank everybody for fellowshipping tonight. Thank the chat. Thank the panel. I love all you guys. Listen, no matter what you're going through, I know it gets tough. I know it gets hard. I know sometimes we just we just are just clueless. But that's when we just need to just lay it down at the feet of Jesus, trust in God, and do the best we can each day, and God will work it out. Amen. Thanks, Brother Dave. Uh, Lisa? Yeah, praise the Lord. I really enjoyed the fellowship. You know, there's times sometimes by the end of the week, I wonder, because you're so uh, worn out from the week that people call it the weekend. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> It was been a blessing because I was feeling a little run down today. And as pa Sister Paula referred to earlier, how she had been kind of, I won't say stress and I won't put words in her mouth, but just seeking God for an answer in her uh, quest for uh, a solution to a problem she was facing. And uh, that happened to me today because I had been procrastinating on something I didn't want to do. And we all do that. I mean, we always push stuff we don't want to do to the to the end especially yeah. if it's distasteful even though we know we should just handle it first but i had been seeking the lord about and making sure it was the right thing for me to do which was part of the procrastination and as i said before when i didn't 
get an answer. I say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to act. You don't want me to do it. You're going to block me from doing it. Yeah. So I went on and got it done. And it was smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. It was something I needed to do where I actually had to deal with the government on something. And how often did this happen? I walked in and there was no one there except the people to help me. It wasn't a line. It wasn't anything. So it just went smooth. And what I had been kind of not relishing dealing with just went as smooth as could be today Mm -hmm. and i'm just thankful to the lord for that it was a wonderful fellowship tonight there were excellent questions from people in the chat Mm -hmm. thank you to everyone on the panel thank you to the people in the chat room for your questions and your kindness and your courtesy tonight Mm -hmm. thank you bless you in jesus name to everyone amen thank you lisa appreciate that very nice very nice comments thank you paula yeah, this was a great uh, fellowship. I loved how everybody got involved in the chat. Yeah. There were so many comments and questions. I lost track of all of them. And that's yeah, me too. really awesome. And, um, you know, uh, this was just a wonderful way to spend a Friday evening. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I completely agree. It was, a, it was a good way to end my work day and to have this, uh, have this time. Uh, I would agree. Yeah, and I did notice there was somebody in there pushing works in the chat, but mm-hmm. uh, everybody just kind of got on top of that. And that was yeah. really awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Right. This is not the place we want to really focus on works and crazy. No, it's no. a fellowship of believers. That's uh, it. The true Absolutely. gospel. Absolutely. And thank you, Jason, for substituting for Luke. Oh, thank you. That was That's awesome. Nice of you. Thank you so and, much. Uh, I really look forward to next week. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay, thanks, Paula. Thanks. Well, yeah, I wanted to say thanks to, uh, to you also, Cripps, for filling in. That was great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I was glad to, glad to do it. Matthias? Yeah, Brother Cripps, you did a great job. Well, thank you, Lisa. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. I enjoyed sitting back and listening. It was uh, very enjoyable. And uh, the chat room came up with some good topics. Yeah. Yeah covered them greatly uh, i don't know it's always a blessing to be able to come together and glorify god and on a friday night what a there's nothing better really to do no you're right. you're right thanks Matthias. thanks for being here all right and i also would agree with uh, the panel it was a great fellowship and I, as i said at the beginning i'm not trying to fill uh, brother luke's shoe, shoes uh, it's his broadcast. It's his channel. Um, I was grateful that he reached out to me and asked me to do it. I was uh, happy to happy to oblige, and it's it's been a blessing for me as well. And thanks for all the comments. Um, I would I would do it again if he needed me to. Uh, fortunately, he's usually here for these, and he, he uh, didn't want to cancel it because he feels like the fellowship is important. Um, so I uh, was happy to be able to fill in and. Um, I'm, I'm sure he'll have me do it again. I hope after he listens to this and I uh, hope he's pleased with the outcome. I certainly am. Um, we definitely uh, praise the name of God and we definitely uh, stay true to the gospel and stay true to the things that we all agree on uh, in the fellowship and um, agree with what everyone else said about the comments in the chat. Uh, you guys got involved. That's, what I, that's all I could ever ask for. I wasn't a whole lot of dead, uh, dead air where we're trying to figure out what to talk about. And that's always a good broadcast when that, when it happens like that. Um, and Hey, switch, uh, I saw last week, uh, switch, you were asking about me. I don't, uh, I was in the process of getting ready to move. So I wasn't part of last week's, uh, uh, fellowship. So I try to be here, uh, when I can, and I'll, uh, make a habit of doing that more in the future. Uh, just wasn't able to make it last week, but I appreciated you asking about me switch. So thank you. All right, so that's it for us, and I'm not going to use the same uh, ending that Brother Luke does. That's his. I'll, I'll just use mine and uh, say goodnight to the chat, and thank you, panel, for your support tonight. It was uh, wonderful and awesome, and uh, thank you so much. You guys are a real blessing. Uh, so we'll be back here again next Friday night for another Fellowship Friday on uh, Sin City Preacher, and Brother Luke will be back with you guys, and uh, I'll, I'll likely be here as well, and uh, some of the same people on the panel. Um, so until next week, uh, good night, God bless, and take care.